to the screen. So today we're, we're, we're talking about data science for startups. And um, honestly, just, just to give you an idea that data science is not only limited to startups or limited to any specific um, field, it really can be applied everywhere. So, so just to set uh, the stage, um, I think it's good to have an open mind in terms of how to apply data science and where can it be applied. It literally can be applied everywhere. I'm just giving a few examples over here, but then the space is really huge. So just a little background. Uh, I work at Bank ABC in ABC Lab, which is the innovation lab. Uh, we do innovation and help the bank in general with innovation. Um, and one of the projects that I'm personally working on is ILA Bank. Um, basically, it's, it's, it's a bank that's on your phone. Um, so if, if you're not aware of it, follow the Instagram account of ILA Bank and get to know it. It's really cool and we're actually changing the industry. Um, okay, so to start with, uh, why are we talking about data science now? Okay, I think uh, we can take questions, um, if I'm not mistaken, Dr. Isra. We can take questions, uh, just post them on the chat, and then we'll tap into them at the end. Yes. So why yeah. are them to be at the end? Guys, if, uh, whoever has a question, please drop a question in the chat, and we will um, address these uh, when Isra finishes her. Her. We'll probably cross the one hour meeting, <laughs> but yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll make it uh, within the one hour. Um, so, so why are we talking uh, now about data science? Like we hear a lot about data science, machine learning, artificial intelligence. What did really happen? Um, now, unfortunately, this I don't think I can hear your uh, voices, but maybe you can actually, um, maybe you can write. Uh, some comments on terms of what you think changed and why are we why is everyone interested in data science now um, guys you can unmute yourselves if you would like to participate you can either even uh, type on the chat uh, I'm, I'm following on the chat as well all right okay so so basically what happened is that um, with with all the technology advancements that we're, we're seeing for the past, let's say, 10 years, I think uh, the most relevant or the, the, the biggest uh, change that happened is um, the boom of social media. And with social media, um, it, it allowed literally every person on Earth with internet access, it allowed them to generate their own data. So I can uh, tweet, I can post an Instagram account uh, on my Instagram account and on my Facebook, on my LinkedIn. It's unlimited and it's accessible to everyone. So this is what happened. Um, basically what happened is that um, humans are producing data on a personal level. A bigger, biggest data that has ever been produced. Um, uh, there's, a, there's a statistics that says 90% of the world's data have been created over the past two years alone. And this is huge, honestly. Um, so so the, 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 ability to, to, the ability that everyone has to create data is huge. Now, uh, we will tap into why or how data is used in social media and in general. But I think social media is, is an example that touches to everyone. So um, Twitter says that every 60 seconds, 98,000 tweets are posted. 170,000, one, one, sorry, 170 million emails are sent every 60 seconds. And 700,000 Google searches are done every 60 seconds. Now imagine like if we have data for let's say one month and even more than that. The interesting thing is that when we think of data, it's not only data that, let's say, is structured. Um, on YouTube, 20 hours of video is uploaded every minute. So imagine for every minute, we have actually 20 hours of video uploaded. So there is, there is really huge potential uh, of data. Um, and this is just an example on social media. We can even think of all the companies, all the organizations, um, and even off, off the technical part, which we will tap into later. Um, so so um, just this is an interesting thing that I like 
to share. Um, it says that Facebook can know with just 10 likes, it can know you better than a colleague, with 70 likes better than a friend, with 150 likes better than a family member, and with 300 likes better than your spouse. So data is actually defining humans uh, in a way that uh, we really, I think, uh, need to think of and think of how can we utilize it even better. Um, okay, so we will be tapping into um, data science for startups. We will uh, understand or our, uh, we will talk about what is the difference between data science and machine learning and artificial intelligence and all those terms that we're using nowadays, which are pretty much confusing. Um, we'll talk about data products and then um, I'll suggest to you a few readings that, uh, that will be interesting and will open up uh, your horizon even more. So this is a coffee shop, okay? It's located in Rhode Island. Now, what can we see different in this coffee shop? It looks like just a normal coffee shop. There's a guy trying to buy coffee and the servers are trying to serve coffee. There are a few, go a few people um, on the side trying or doing probably their homework. Now, this coffee shop, what's unique about it is that it is located um, near a university and they don't take money for the coffee that you buy. They actually ask you for data instead of money. So um, what they do is that they only serve students and faculty members because that's their focus um, group. And um, they share their personal information in, in, in return to the coffee. So what happens is that, um, let's say I come to the coffee shop and I order a latte. They'll tell me, okay, uh, here's your latte. Now we need to understand uh, more about you. So can you tell us what are your hobbies? Can you tell us what's your profession? Can you tell us what are your studies? And then they keep on accumulating data of their customers, which are students of this specific university. And basically this is their business model. This is their stack, which is quite interesting. The, the coffee shop is also um, there in Japan. And I think I read as well, it's in Hong Kong. So, so it, it looks like it's a it's, um, successful business, which is interesting. So um, what does it, this coffee shop um, collect? Um, so this is not really what they collect. I'm just assuming the things that they would collect. Um, they would collect the name, the age, um, your residence place, your favorite coffee, professional interests, uh, sports, what sports do you work? Are you uh, looking for a job? Uh, do you have a job currently? Stuff like that. So this is the initial phase of data science or big data. Now, what happens after that is that they collect all the data into tables, okay? And tables are um, basically the entries of data. It's just like an Excel sheet, okay? So they will have tables for different um, focus um, areas. Okay, so let's say I will I will have a table for um, their residency, for uh, their uh, hobbies, a table about their jobs, a, a table about their studies. Um, maybe I can know if they failed or passed the exam, uh, stuff like that. So they do, they will collect all the tables and then they'll put them into, um, into servers. Okay, um, now those those databases, they'll put them into databases. Now, those databases are connected to each other. And this will form what is called big data, okay? So big data is basically um, connecting all the data together, okay? Now, what happens after that? Like, the coffee shop, for sure, they're not only collecting data. I mean, they have to generate revenue. So what they do is they turn this data into insights, okay? And then into actions. So insights and actions, they enable faster decisions, okay? Now, we can, what they say, uh, this coffee shop specifically what they say is that they aggregate data such as student majors, accepted, expected graduation years, recruitment, um, recruitments that are happening and stuff like that. So they do aggregate this data and then sell this data into partners, okay? So let's say um, I'm Microsoft. I'm looking for um, I'm looking for students to hire. Okay, 
I can go to this coffee shop and tell them, give me the, the list of students or, or the, the segment of students that could fit into this specific job. Okay. And this is what they do actually. So they do sell data, aggregated data again. So it's not exposing the customer information specifically, but it gives general insights. They do sell this to clothing companies, to uh, other restaurants. Um, to companies that are looking to hire, to even personal tutors. Um, it's, it's quite an interesting use case of, of uh, data. So, so moving from big data to insights to actions, um, where is data science in all of this? Data science is actually the insights that, that are provided or are um, generated out of the big data, okay? Now, what are actions? Okay, so, so data science is important. Actions as well is equally important. Data science gives you insights. Actions is where you actually use those insights. So you can use them for marketing, for campaigns, for partnerships. Um, like if, if, you're a, if you're a manufacturing company, you can use it to enhance your operations. Um, and the list goes on. So, so this is the key, um, I would say, the key formula turning big data into insights into actions. And this is why it's useful, and this is why data science is, is becoming a huge topic that everyone is interested in. Now, all the definitions, big data, data science, machine learning, AI. Um, I like this um, Venn diagram. Uh, I think that's what they call it in statistics. Um, so what, the, what this, this, what this um, diagram says is that Basically, it explains how data science is formed. Now, data science is not, is not a field that's, um, that's, let's say, located into one area only. It's a cross-functional field. So, so it touches on IT, it touches on math and statistics, it touches on programming, it touches on business, and it touches on uh, subject matter experts. So basically, um, a data scientist is someone that understands statistics and math, um, understands programming and, in general, computer science, and uh, they use big data to to generate insights using the subject matter expertise. So, for example, um, I'm a data scientist. I'm working at a bank. Okay. Now, if if I decided to move um, to, let's say, um, a manufacturing company, I can take my, my my knowledge and my experience with me, but then I still need the subject matter expert. So a data scientist cannot be uh, always uh, the subject matter expert. Um, so what, what happens is that you sit with someone that actually understands the field, and then you apply what their understanding into um, data science and into coding and into the data that you have to generate insights and to generate prediction models. Now, um, you can see here that uh, you can, ah, no, okay, it's not working. you can see here that machine learning is part of data science. Now, we all hear the hype about artificial intelligence, machine learning, data science. Um, what is all this about? Okay, so artificial intelligence is the bigger box. Data science is inside that box. And machine learning is even inside the data science box. So machine learning is basically automating things that, um, that don't need to be, uh, let's say, uh, to go through a human. Data science generates the business uh, value of uh, to, to companies, to startups, to uh, manufacturing companies, to whatever it is. And then artificial intelligence is the bigger uh, picture that covers all of those, plus a lot more. So uh, when, when you hear about um, self-driving cars, this is using artificial intelligence. Um, yeah. So, okay, so we can we do see a lot of companies that are changing um, the way the way customers are behaving across the world and the two most uh, or the two biggest companies that are doing this are amazon and netflix now the question comes as to what are they doing different and how did they win so instead of like i remember 10 years ago i used to go to a dvd shop and get the um, catalog of DVDs and choose what DVD do I want to really get it. Now, this I think mostly stopped. Maybe we do still have a few DVD shops uh, in Bahrain, 
But in general, the, the worldwide trend have moved to seeing, net, seeing movies on Netflix as on demand. And then the same on Amazon. So instead of um, going and buying things um, from different stores, I log into Amazon and I buy everything at one go. Now, how, what, what did they do different? Um, of course, their business model is different, but um, they still did something that's, um, that's common in between them both and a lot of other successful companies, is that uh, they use data. So, um, so let's say um, I used to go to the DVD shop um, in Bukhwara, I think. Um, I get the catalog. And because I used to go there every week, um, the guy that works there um, more or less knew what my uh, taste in movies is. So um, he would suggest to me movies based on what he knew about me. Okay. And then uh, when, when I had my nieces around, uh, he would even suggest um, uh, movies for kids. Now, because there was this personal connection between me and the person who was selling or the seller or the customer representative, um, um, th there was this rapport built between the customer and the company. Okay. Now, what happens when there is no uh, front end agent or there is no customer service agent that is facing the customer? Okay. Now, if for example, Netflix, um, what they did is that they use data to understand you more as, as a customer and then do the same thing that the DVD shop person was doing is recommending specific uh, movies and, and TV series for me specifically. Okay. And then, so, so this is basically um, the, the win or the edge of data. Amazon does the same thing. So Amazon, 35% uh, of their revenues is generated by product recommendation. And product recommendation is basically um, the, the customer representative or, the, or the, the customer service person knowing me personally, but then it's digitized and then it's automated. So I don't need a lot of customer representative to know each person, but then I just automate the whole thing and I'm done. So that's what Amazon and Netflix use. They both use recommendation to achieve different objectives. So um, Amazon, I think uh, their objective was increasing revenue. And Netflix, because it's a one-time payment every month, um, they used recommendations to, uh, to improve the stickiness of their customers. So um, this does apply to almost all of the companies. It's not only... Uh, tied to technical companies, but even um, there are such use cases in airlines, manufacturing, agriculture, and uh, the, the list just continues. So basically, um, they replace the physical touch with customers with understanding and personalizing their, uh, the customer experience using it. Okay. Now, data science at startups. Um, we all know that there are like tons of uh, startup ideas out there. Um, there are very, really successful startups that are actually changing the industry of bigger companies. Now, there are two types of uh, using data science in, in startups. Uh, one of them is using data science at the core of the company. And then the other type is complementing the core of the company, which is not data science, with data science. Now, they're both equally important. It's just different um, examples or different ways of using data science. Um, I personally think a successful company would use data science. I think it's, it's, it's really difficult to scale up a company or a startup without the use of data. It's nearly impossible to scale up without the using of data and without personalizing the, what, what you're actually doing. Now, um, I'll come later to a few other examples, but just wanted to note that um, data science is not only used when you're actually a business to consumer uh, company, but it even expands more than that. We'll come to a few different uh, examples. So um, I would say that 20% of startups are using data science at the core, and then 80% or even more than 80% are complementing their startup with data science. 
Um, I'll, work, I'll talk about my personal experience working with two successful startups um, in Silicon Valley. The first startup uh, was a parking startup. Um, so it's a parking app that was used as a payment method instead of putting coins on the parking um, meter. I uh, used the app to pay. So it's not a data science um, a startup. Basically, it's, it's a payment method. But uh, what, what, what we did uh, when I worked with them um, is that we built an algorithm that would find the probability of finding a, a parking spot at a specific location with a specific time. Now, <clears throat> this is a way where we are complementing the, what, we're, what we're offering to our customers with something that's, um, that would make our customers stick to us probably. Because uh, if other uh, apps are not providing this, then why not everyone is using this? Because of course, I want to know the probability of finding a parking spot um, uh, on this road rather than going throughout the road and finding that there are no parking spots. Um, the other company that uh, I worked for was an on-demand um, artist uh, app. So um, you basically uh, request for an artist uh, for specific services. Um, their services, the services that they had were limited. Um, they did have a lot of customers. Now, uh, what, what the project that I worked on there was um, an algorithm that finds the right point where the customer gets addicted to the service. Okay, and addicted, of course, is an on a positive way. Um, so uh, there is, there is a, if you're interested on this, there is um, a paper that uh, is called Buy Till You Die, and it's a package that's, it's a data science package that can be used. Um, basically, I use the Buy Till You Die um, algorithm to find out when will customers um, basically move to from uh, an intermittent customer to a lifelong customer. And it turns out to be that after the fourth service on this app, uh, the customer switches to being a lifetime uh, customer. Now, it depends, of course, uh, different customers will have uh, different frequency, but then it's a lifetime customer, more or less. Um, so this, those are two examples. Uh, of course, the number of examples are really huge, but uh, those are two examples that, uh, that would um, open up you know, um, your thoughts into how data science can be used within your startup. Now, other than building algorithms within the startup, it's also important to make sure that me as a startup founder or as someone who is working in a startup, I'm taking the right decisions. And to make sure that I'm taking the right decisions, um, the best way is to rely on data because everyone has an instinct and especially it's, it's, it's especially known in startups that uh, we deceive ourselves into the, the success that we're doing, but it's also good to be grounded on the reality and understand how to, um, how to direct the startup. So even on the on-demand um, startup, uh, one of the things that uh, we also worked on was um, so they did. They had two types of services, and they thought that type one was the one that generated a lot of revenue to them, while type two did not generate much revenue. But then, because that's the, the instinct or the uh, the primary instinct that they had. Now, when when we dig deeper into data, it turns out to be that the revenue generated on on um, on the second type of uh, product was much bigger, it was I think uh, 60 or 70 percent bigger than, uh, than the revenue generated on the first uh, service. But then um, the second service was not uh, promoted well in, uh, as, as in the marketing campaign that they did. So they fixed their uh, direction as a start and then uh, they focused on promoting the type two as well as type one. And even type two had more um, uh, let's say addicted customers than type one. So so it's it's good to dig deeper into your data and understand and make sure that you are taking a decision uh, based on data, not based on instincts, because data tells you the actual reality, um, whether we like it or not. But reality, I think, is good to to understand where are we now. Um, companies that um, 
that are using data science at the core. Um, honestly, I think in, in the region, there are not many companies that are using data science at the core. Um, but two of uh, the really interesting companies are uh, CESAM and Odin Technology. So what CESAM does is it turns emotions into investment ones. Um, basically, they build NLP algorithms to analyze billions of news articles and social media posts. And then um, they apply NLP algorithms to understand what is the relying information on their list, uh, what are the, uh, the trends, uh, what are the, is, it, is it a positive thing or is it a negative thing? Um, and they use, so this is all uh, data science that is applied on text and not only on data. And then um, they use this to help predict the financial market movements. So, um, so let's say let's say we're talking about Tesla. Um, they do extract all the articles that are written about Tesla, and then they analyze the, the sentiments behind this and um, try to understand how to how to predict how to use this to predict the financial market movement or the stock movement of the Tesla stock. So they use a machine learning algorithms to turn big data into smart data which can be, again, uh, going back to big data, insights, and then action, which can lead to customers or investors taking actions and investing in a certain stock or avoiding investing in a certain stock. Um, Open Technologies is, um, is, a, is a startup that focuses on factories. So basically what they do is they make factories super smart. Uh, they help uh, manufacturers uh, solve plant inefficiencies, and then they understand the impact of uh, those changes uh, on production in real time. And what they do is that um, in 10 weeks, um, they can, they can um, let's say, enhance the operations of the manufacturing industry or of the manufacturing plant um, versus a usual one-year analysis that was done on the traditional way to just make a small enhancement. So the, the use of data science at a code is really huge. Um, I gave this example specifically on factories just, just to tell you that it's, it's not only about customers. So um, one of, the, one of uh, my colleagues actually were, had a startup that was focused on agriculture, okay? And then what he did is that he implemented IoT devices on uh, the, I think they call it glass plants, um, and then, uh, or glass houses. They, they, they um, implemented IoT, or they, um, um, and then they used the IoT to understand what were the, the surrounding um, environments of this uh, specific glass, um, glass house. And then how did this impact the trees or the plants that were growing within this glass house? And this made them increase their, um, their uh, pro produce of, um, I think they were producing flowers to 10 times or even more than that. So it really can be applied everywhere. The key is to have the right data and then have the right insights out of this data. Um, again. Data science is not only uh, specific to, to certain uh, industries. It can go in banking, finance, healthcare. Uh, healthcare actually has tons of data science use cases, which are quite interesting. So what I would suggest, if you're interested in this, just search data science use cases, and then you'll get the full list uh, to whatever uh, industry you're looking at. Um, <clears throat> one, of, um, one of the interesting uh, use cases was um, in an airline company in the US. So they used uh, historical data of their customers to, um, to, let's say, assign seats in a strategic way that people with different interests or with similar backgrounds, similar age categories, um, similar gender, were seated next to each other. So that's a smart way to use data. I mean, sometimes you get seated near people you don't really, you know, um, Let's say uh, you can't really start a conversation with. So that's that's a really smart way um, in, in applying data science and, and data analytics in terms of uh, airlines. Um, 
I would suggest reading more about the use cases. Um, the nice thing about data science is that use cases are not specific to a certain industry. So the same use case can be applied to a different industry with a twist, and then it would produce even better results. So um, it's, it's really nice, especially if you're curious. Um, it's, it's cool to think about all the data science use cases and then even implement it. So is data science only about predictions? Um, I think most of what I spoke about so far is predictions. Um, honestly, it is the biggest um, uh, field of data science, but it's not only predictions. So you can do forecasting, um, let's say forecasting of stocks, and then recommendation engines like Netflix and Amazon. You can stimulate customers to uh, encourage them to spend more or to use your service even more. Um, you can use network analysis to understand uh, the network of people and how people are connected to each other. And this, this is an example. Uh, so uh, with, with the COVID uh, tracking of, um, of patients uh, of COVID, network analysis was used um, in terms of uh, tracking um, how did each patient get in touch with a second patient and even though they don't really know each other in real life. Um, clustering is, is an interesting use case as well, or is an interesting um, algorithm that is used in data science. Um, basically, it helps understanding what are the different categories of, um, let's say, customers that you have. Uh, natural language processing, um, digital assistants use a lot of natural language processing. Even um, when in emails, when you write an email and then Google suggests you what's the what's the um, next um, sentence or what's the rest of the sentence. And even in natural language processing, an interesting uh, application was uh, there is, there is a, a new startup that is catered to suggest um, the rest of the code uh, for coders. So let's say you start with typing the first um, few characters of the code, and then it suggests to you what's, what's the rest of it, or even what's the next step of the code. So that's, that's quite cool. And you can see that um, data science helps a lot of companies in expanding, and even us as customers in making our life easier, basically. Uh, market basket analysis is something that's used um, Mainly, I would say in supermarkets, where um, so so a classical example is um, milk and uh, and uh, di baby diapers. Um, they realized companies when they did the market basket analysis, which in short um, tries to explain or tries to tell you which two products that are totally not related to each other are usually bought together. So they did this analysis in, I think, Walmart, and they figured out that baby diapers are usually bought along with milk, even though they're not, not baby milk, but like normal milk. Um, even though they're not related, but they found out that they're usually brought together, brought or customers buy them together. And uh, this is why you can see a lot in a lot of uh, supermarkets, the baby stuff are put towards the end where you can see the dairy products as well. So it's it's a strategic way to to align uh, which products go in which shelves, and um, this can be used as well in other um, industries. But uh, the most uh, relevant is uh, is uh, the supermarket. Now you can see that it's 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 much more than uh, than a prediction. It has tons of applications. And honestly, I think that um, applications currently are, are still very limited. Um, there is a huge um, area to expand the applications of data science and then across all industries. So as a data-driven startup, uh, what are the questions you should ask yourself? Um, and what are the things that you need to, um, to expand your knowledge? and how to use data to the best interest of your startup. So the first thing that you have to understand is that, or you have to ask yourself is that, are you trying to be a, a data-driven startup or are you trying to be a data core startup? And then it depends on what stage is your startup. So of course, at the beginning of, uh, of building your startup, 
the most important thing is to collect your data correctly. And then as you move, you can actually use your data in a smart way to give insights and then action. Um, what data science can give you as, as a startup, so it can tell you which customers to target, so upselling process. It can tell you uh, what are the different categories of your customers and how to treat each category. Um, it can answer hypothetical business questions. So let's say, what if I sell 3,000 units and then um and those and and this i sell those only to 70 percent of my uh, customer base so all the hypothetical questions data will help you to solve those and then where to invest where to focus where to direct your um, startup um so those are the most important um, things to focus on now an important thing is uh, i think in startups is um, decision making and dashboards is, is a really good, good tool that you can use. Um, there are many tools to build dashboards, but basically um, having a, a single view of where are you as a startup gives you a huge advantage in terms of um, knowing where you are at right now, what is your next step and are you doing the right thing or not. Um, what are data enforcement? Startup founders. Okay, so um, so as a founder of startup, it's very important to be data informed. Now, even if you're not, uh, even if data science is not at the core of your startup, but it's very important to be data informed because basically it guides your journey, it grounds you to reality, and it helps you to make the right decisions. Um, an important thing as well is so so I'm sure. Um, Dr. Isra and other presenters have explained this, but there are different phases of a startup, right? So with each phase of a startup, as a startup owner or as someone who works for a startup, there is one key metric that is important to everyone. So each stage will have one key metric. And then when you move to the next stage, you switch this key metric to a different key metric that is important at this stage specifically. So it's very important to focus on only one key metric at a time because data is, um, I think, interesting. And uh, sometimes uh, you you have endless questions for data where you just um, more or less waste time in asking questions and asking hypothetical questions, where the most important thing is to focus on your one metric that is the most important metric to your uh, startup at this um, Now, the metric and the goal depends on the stage, as, as I said, and it, it makes, sometimes it, more than one metric makes sense, but you have to, you still have to focus on one metric. And how to build that metric, um, there are a lot of good readings, you can, you can read about how to build metrics for startups. But then data science is used to build those metrics and then to, um, let's say, present them in a visual way. Um, so I think this slide came up uh, wrong. It was supposed to come after predictions, but this is an interesting thing. So um, self-driving cars um, is an important example of uh, not only predictions, but even Clustering, I think it, it, it involves a lot of uh, data science and machine learning algorithms, uh, deep learning, clustering, um, natural language processing, image analysis, audio analysis, it, it, it is really unlimited. So this is um, one of the most um, life-changing uh, use cases of data science, artificial intelligence and machine learning. Um, another uh, example is digital assistants, and I'm not sure of um, if you guys uh, um, came across this, but um, Ela Bank has got a digital assistant that runs on artificial intelligence and machine learning, and um, it helps uh, customers uh, to understand or to answer their questions, and helps them with, let's say, onboarding onto the app and doing a lot of stuff within the app. So um, this is, I think, uh, a classical example of using machine learning and data science that is applied in Bahrain. Um, you can follow the Instagram account, Ask Fatma, 
um, uh, we do post a lot of uh, information about machine learning, data science, um, and then the use of technology for digital assistants. But it's similar to Siri and Alexa in terms of um, how data is used. So as an example, Alexa, uh, it collects data from like tons or thousands or even maybe more than thousand uh, conversations that it has. It uses different algorithms, it uses text to speech and then converting of speech to text, uh, natural language processing, uh, machine learning and detecting the right answer for the right question. So um, the, the examples are really huge. Okay, going back to your startup data. So as a startup, um, if data science is not at the core of your startup, and even this applies to companies as well, what is the most important things um, for you to keep in mind? So the most important thing is save all your data. Um, you will need it, even if you don't need it right now, you will need it eventually. Um, as, as the startup or as the company is growing, um, more use cases would come into the picture and then you will need specific uh, data. Now, as, as, a, as let's say, as a beginner startup, uh, Excel sheets are, are pretty much perfect to start with. But then uh, when you expand, um, it's good to have something that's automated just to avoid any human errors and any missing data. Um, in general, uh, I think it's better to avoid manual entry of data. Um, if you can connect different systems, and now APIs are available, you can connect different systems to feed data that would be really perfect. Um, and the most uh, that's the challenging issue of uh, startups is the mission impossible of collecting historical data. So it's really difficult to, to let's say, um, look back at the past two years and try to collect data for the past two years when you need it for a specific use case of data science. The easier way is to collect all the data that you have and then use it whenever you need it. So now with, um, with all the cloud infrastructure, AWS, uh, Google, uh, Microsoft Azure, um, you can really save your data on databases on the cloud at a, at a really minimal cost, like it, it has never been this cheap to save data and to keep historical data. So start collecting data now. Uh, I think it's important to, to have data as part of your uh, operational model or your business canvas. Um, it's important to build on data and then collect data. So um, data comes in different forms and shapes depending on your startup, but um, images are data, um, videos are data, and um, let's say conversations or audios are data. So data is not only, um, not only structured data, but then we also have semi-structured and unstructured data where, where everything can actually be saved. So if, if you are a company or a startup that's focusing on, um, let's say, geolocations, even though geolocations are not structured data, you can still save it. So in general, save all your data. It helps you a lot. Um, what are the tools that you can use um, if you know programming or if, if you are willing to learn programming, which I very much recommend? Um, you can use R or Python. They're open source uh, programming languages and uh, they have a lot of uh, interesting uh, packages that are tailored to data science. Um, now, just because Dr. Islam mentioned to me that not everyone is with a technical background, I avoided getting into technical discussions, but uh, feel free to ask me uh, any technical discussion uh, during the conversation or we're actually ending the conversation. But um, I would I want to say something to all the non-technical people. It's not difficult to learn coding, especially with data. It's not difficult at all. One of my colleagues, when I did my master, was an English language major, and he made it all through the master's program of data science. He learned coding on his own, and now he's a data scientist at Amazon Seattle. So you can you can really do it. It just needs some time and some effort, but um, it's, it's the skill that will help you wherever you are. Because as you saw, data science can be applied um, across different, um, 
different segments, different sectors, different uh, applications, so it is everywhere. Now, uh, moving to the visualization part where you can see what's happening with your startup with a single view, you can use Power BI or Tableau. As university students, you have free access usually to both of them. So it's a good skill to have for your startup um, and to make sure that you're taking the right decisions for your startup. Now, <clears throat> um, two good reads. One is actually not a read, it's unstructured data, but uh, this book is really good. Um, it explains data science from a business per perspective. It's non-technical at all, but even technical people would uh, enjoy it. Um, it's, it's one of the best books, I think, to change the mindset in terms of uh, analytical thinking or data strategic thinking. Um, and the other uh, recommended thing is uh, a movie called The Great Hack. It's on Netflix. It tells you how uh, data is actually being captured. It's a bit creepy, but it gives you a good insight of how can you use data. Um, so the main takeaways, and this is our last slide, so if you have any questions, please feel free. <clears throat> data science is not only for technical startups. It can be applied across startups, across companies, across industries. Um, both online and on-ground startups can leverage data. So it's not only when you have an online platform that's accessible by customers. Even if you're a manufacturer company, you're an agriculture company, you can still use data. Then almost all successful companies um, in 2020 are leveraging data. So if you are starting your uh, new company, uh, put the base of data and then you can do wonders with it. As a startup founder, being data informed is a huge plus. So uh, there are many blogs, many, many good resources available online. <coughs> and uh, MIT actually has good, uh, good courses about uh, data science and how can you leverage data science and machine learning in companies. 